It's up time for another edition of Three Point Stands presented by Mountain Dew. And this Monday looks very different. Not only is there snow and ice outside here in Memphis, but on this episode, we also have Devin Walker joining me. I don't know what he's doing. I want you guys to know this is our second time filming this, so we're going to try to make it better because Devin messed up and could have gotten us in trouble. But here we are. Here, here we go. This is 2.0 edition of Three Point Stands. <laughs> Devin, let's start with the Memphis Grizzlies. They had two games this weekend. We're talking about Sunday's game because the team played phenomenal, seven players in double figures. But at the end of the game, you know what we're talking about? We're talking about that May 2 dunk on JV where he then wraps his legs around JV. JV kind of spins him around, gets a tech, but then JV returns the favor and also does a dunk but wraps his legs around, who was it, Joseph's? And he gets caught in the, caught in the line of fire um, but let's break down this dunk and how disrespectful was it? Because you were amazing on social media. Uh, uh, this is the thing. Like, I wasn't amazing on social media because I felt like JV was he was me in that play. Like, it was like a part we were like becoming one in okay. that play. I am a very petty human being, and if you do something to me, make a triplet, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find some way. I'm gonna find some way to take a stab back at you. And I, and I think that's what Jonas Valanciunas did because let's be, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. I'm gonna try to use the the right language this time. If you straddle your neck around me, if you straddle around me on my neck, if you, you dunk on me and you straddle around my neck, I'm going to power bomb you. I didn't use the word at that time, but I'm going to power bomb you. And I mean, it's kind of JV. He kind of power bombed him. He kind of like flicked him off, and he like kind of hit spun and hit the ground. But that's. Other than spitting in my face, it's probably one of the most disrespectful things you can do, do, do to another grown man. So to straddle my neck, you deserve to get power bomb. You you you, you better be ready to fight. If you yeah. straddle me, you're ready to fight. Those are fighting words. But for JV, um, you did it to me. Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do it right back to you. Uh, to Corey Joseph's key, like you said, you got caught in a lot of fire. And guess what else? The 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 best part about all this, Megan Triple. You know the best part about all this? What is this? They had to hold that L at the end. They did. Straddle. We played. We played pony by genuine on your neck, and then we made you hold that L at the end. So that was that was the best part about it. Um, like I said, but the thing is, like if you if you straddle somebody, you've got to be ready to fight. I think JV would be the one I would want to be ready to scrap in a situation like that. Um, look, I agree with you. I think even him spinning him around like that. I mean. Not the right thing to do, but I understand why you did it. Just because of the standpoint of, like, you put your legs around me. Very disrespectful. I'm happy that JV took the technical call. I was like, yeah, that's fine. Like, worth it. But then he responded in the best way possible. Shout out to Joe. Uh, what's his name? Corey Josephs. I feel bad for him, though, because he didn't ask for that. But but that's on his teammate. You got to take that up with me, too. Like, yo, you put me now on the highlight reel. Because that was a highlight reel on Sports Center last night was the May 2 dunk on JV and then JV's dunk on him. And he didn't ask for all that. But you love to see the team sit together. Ja told JV, disrespectful, we'll get him back. They did in the best way response. And you, I know you are petty. <laughs> so I agree with you on that one. <laughs> I've seen your petty ways. Luckily, I haven't been on the other end of it, I don't think. But maybe I have. Yeah, I have no idea. Have, you have it. It's fine. In the words of Pooh Shiesty, uh big brr. <laughs> uh, he come, come get it back in blood, Megan Triplett. But not not actually, but we got it back in a, a, a poster, I guess. Yeah. So, so now I need you to sit back because Devin, we keep seeing not your head. Thank hey, you. Bad. I want to see your whole face. Like I haven't seen you in a very long time. We don't get the chance to talk to each other very often. So this is a very special moment. Let's get to our second stance. Valentine's Day weekend it is a weekend where you love it or you hate it, where you see all the flower posts and like, look at my boo got me. Look at what Bay got me. I'm so in love. I have a Valentine, and you see where I'm where I'm at in my life right now. But the best thing for Valentine's Day, what did you see? Uh, I want to ask you first, uh, Megan, how was your Valentine's Day? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a great Valentine's Day. My dad was my Valentine's. He um, got me lunch slash dinner. I had some ice cream from Baskin Robbins. And I spent it just relaxing, you know. How was yours? <laughs> Sounds like a sucky day. But um, on the Valentine's Day front, I think uh, – <laughs> I think the one thing about Valentine's Day that's corny to me is the the public, the like w wanting to post your Valentine on Valentine's Day, to, to, like you said, to, to as an announcement. I think that's the idea official thing. That's so corny to me because like you can do that on a February, you can do that on a 
Tuesday in April, you do it on a Tuesday in March, you do it on a Tuesday in December, you do it on a Tuesday in November, but you choose Valentine's Day because you want to be in the front of the headlines. That's corny. So That's you're corny. calling, hold on, you're calling Devin Booker, Kendall Jenner, corny, Cole yeah. Tucker, Vanessa Hudgens, corny. You're calling some people out. Yeah, that's corny. That's that's super corny. Like you could have posted, you could have posted them on February fifteenth, and I would have been okay, cool. Like, but some people, I feel like a lot of people do a lot of extra stuff on Valentine's Day, and I'm I'm not a big extra guy. I mean, I, if I'm gonna show you off on on Valentine's Day, I'm gonna show you off. Okay, that's I'm I'm capping right there. But, you um, are. <laughs> If I, I'm gonna show you off every day. I'm not just gonna show you off on Valentine's Day. You know what I'm saying? So I just think that's corny. Number two, hot take. You ready? This yes. is not a stance, sir. Or I'm taking a stance. Public proposals are also corny. Um, yeah, I'm gonna leave that there. That, that's all you're gonna say? Yeah, public proposals are corny uh, because it sets you up for failure. Because if they say mm-hmm. no, you're screwed. If you say yes, that's a great moment. But like, okay. Congratulations. I, I had a friend get married on Valentine's Day yesterday, a very close friend of mine, and it was very special. That's cute. That's adorable. Go for them. <laughs> Hurrah. Congratulations. <laughs> but I just think public proposals, like at basketball games, at baseball games, I think those are places like, like those are not, uh, whatever. Like, do it at the crib. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. At home. Do it at Zales or Case Jewelers. <laughs> do it at Zales. I, I'm a, I'm, okay, I'm okay with public proposals. What I'm not okay with is like the extravagant the extravagant gifts, which, you, which is usually the celebrities and rich people that show them off a little bit. So like J Lo got this like huge like garden of roses that she's like, oh my gosh, you didn't have to. Cardi being offset, you know, Cardi already said it. if you get roses, you give them grass. Like she got a whole bunch of roses and a trip. Like we don't have to post everything for those who don't have a Valentine. Like I love that you're in love. But like, yo, I don't gotta see it. Like, I don't. Mad props to you. But I'm also, even if I had a Valentine, Devin, I wouldn't like it. You won't see me posting my relationship on social media. Were you Were you angry swiping yesterday, Megan? I was not angry swiping. I was like, oh, cute, okay. But like, ten posts in, I'm like, okay, we get it. Hey, you yeah. love each other. Exactly. I stayed off IG yesterday. A lot of, a lot of. <laughs> I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even gonna go into that deep dive. I can go into. I can go in the weeds on this topic, but I'm not gonna do that. Shout out to my girlfriend though. She's a great. She's a great human. A great soul. Yes, and I saw your post about her. You did, but well, you did one post. I liked it. Yeah, it's see, we, we don't have to do over the top. You know what I'm saying? Just keep it simple. Keep it a book. We, I love you every day. I don't need to love you. <laughs> Look. All right. Well, how about we talk about University of Memphis? Um, it, uh, you, you know, your women's basketball team is looking for a new head coach, Devin. Um, yeah. Coach yeah. McFerrin has decided to retire from University of Memphis. We have literally two minutes to talk about this, so I want to get your take on it because I know that that's your alma mater. You're a fan. You support the team. They're moving into a different direction. And are you happy about it? Uh, you said I got two minutes, so I'm just going to do this, Megan Triplett. So your stance is good. My stance is about damn time. Um, in 13 years on the job, Megan Triplett, she had three 21 seasons. In 13 years on the job, she was 193 and 199. Mm-hmm. Exactly, your face says it all. And and in a city like Memphis, Tennessee, you got to be able to. Mm-hmm. You, you you can't be. You can't have a losing record because this is a hoop city. This is bad. We bleed basketball in the city, so you have to, you got to be good. And there's so many great women's basketball players in the city that have left the city because they did. They look at the Memphis program. They think that's somewhere they they can succeed. So, I hope that today, today is a day where we look at the Memphis basketball pro, women's basketball program and we look at, look forward and say. Okay, we can make a change. Just like the world, it's like America. It's time. It's not. It's time for a change. It's time for yeah. a change. And um, they get a good coach. Hopefully, they can get a co- good coach on there to, to put them in the right direction because we want to see women's basketball succeed in Memphis. I love watching women's basketball. I want to go to the field house and watch them. So, give me a good product so I can support them. Go Tigers! I'm a holler at you, Mr. McFerrin. <laughs> I hey look, I agree with you. I think now is the time for for change. Some time for new. You get the you get the field house. We just went through some like major renovations, and like why not kind of move into a different direction? And you can thank someone for what they did for the program. Well, there might not be that much. <laughs> it might not have been that much, but it's time for some new things. And just like today, a new beginning where Devin Walker talks to me on three point stance. Oh, what don't is that a kissy face? Is that Doug face? Okay, we're not retaping this, Devin. I'm keeping this in. I'm I didn't keeping this in. I didn't say anything bad this time. This is it. All right, this has been your edition of Three Point Stands presented by Mountain Dew. Devin, I hope I get to talk to you soon.